In this video, I wanted to talk about some of the cool things on the frame of this truck. So what we'll do is we'll talk about all the different load paths that are going through this X-Brace cross member right here. And throughout the video, we'll kind of build up um, why I think this thing is really cool because it's doing like four jobs. Some cool stuff that uh, Toyota did with this. And we'll talk about why my bed's off later in the video. But for now, so let's let's go ahead and start talking about what this cross member is doing. So. There's your leaf spring right there. Obviously load comes up through the tire. There's another spring hanger um, on the other side of the tire that you can't see. And then there's a spring hanger right here. So load is obviously being distributed up through that. And then it obviously goes into this cross brace. Um, we're bridged off from the other spring hanger here. Of course, they're symmetrical. Um, what's not symmetrical is if we follow the X brace up here, this one, whoop, this one right here is pretty well lined up with the shock. So there's gonna be a huge amount of loads. These are not factory shocks, by the way. Don't mind that as the shock is trying to control that uh, wheel movement there's going to be a huge amount of loads coming through that guy um, what's not symmetrical though is there's no shock here this has nothing to do with this particular x brace but the this shock is leaned forward and look it lines up perfectly with another cross member there which is great for distributing loads obviously um, real quick too why the shocks like one shocks lean forward and the other shocks lean backwards i'm pretty sure that's something to do with controlling axle wrap so when there's a lot of torque going through this axle and there's a lot of traction at the tires here what will happen with the axle tube is it'll want to push down and then it'll want to like spring back up because there's no um, damper to control that essentially so they're doing it by offsetting these guys and they control what's called axle wrap which is where your axle twists like this anyways that's why they're staggered and then let's going back to the cross member here Another thing this guy is doing is these bolts right here would normally accept the spare tire. It's not here right now. So that's what, three things that it's doing? Springs, shocks, and it's holding the spare tire. And then on top of that, there's um, a thing that can happen if, uh, you know, this X probably does a lot to control that. This cross member is relatively straight. So what it's not great at doing, that straight one, is controlling frame shift. So you can get a frame rail moving in and out this way and another frame rail moving out the opposite direction relative to one another. They're shifting like that. Um, stuff like your rear bumper will control that a little bit. But um, really what you want is a big X to control the frame from shifting like this. So that's four things that that cross member is doing. In my opinion, it's pretty impressive that they're doing all of those things with just one cross member. It's very efficient from a material standpoint and, and I'm just kind of nerdy. I like that engineering stuff. But anyways, first time you see me on camera, if you're new to the channel here, I'm Jay, welcome to Jay Designs. Thank you for clicking on the video. But anyways, why I need to understand what that cross member is doing is because I'm building this thing right here. Um, this is a custom flatbed that's gonna go on to that truck here. This is the second flatbed that I've built for this truck. If you wanna see what the old one looks like, there's a video on that. This one is actually going to be very, very similar to the uh, to the original flatbed that I already have a video on. So make sure and go check that out. But why I need to understand what that cross member is doing is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and cut that cross member entirely out of the frame. And then this thing already has members in it that are additional bed structure to uh, supplement that cross member essentially not being there. So what I'm going to do is there's going to be a bracket that comes on the outside and ties into the bed structure. And then um, same thing here, there's going to be another bracket that comes up this way and again ties into the bed structure and supplements this X not being here. This X is super cool, but uh, I need it out of the way because what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that big 35 inch tire right here. The problem with mounting a 35 inch tire under here from uh, using this factory cross member is the, the factory spare tire will mount here on this lower spot or higher spot. But if you try to mount a 35, it ends up rubbing out here. And consequently what happens is that 35 inch tire sits very, very low. This is a very off-road oriented truck or an off-road oriented build. So I need that tire tucked up as high as possible. So it's gonna be pretty nuts. That cross member is doing four things. This guy right here is gonna be doing five things. Also, I think it's a pretty good idea to talk about why I'm gonna locate this oversized 35 inch tire underneath the bed. Um, pro it probably deserves its own separate video to talk about it, but essentially that tire being mounted underneath the bed right there is ideal from a performance standpoint. Um, so you can mount it on the, the back of the bed. A lot of people do that, um, but it puts the weight really far back and really high up, which is not ideal from a performance standpoint. So this is a very common place to mount the tire and I'm going to make a simple diagram here to actually explain to you why you probably don't want to actually put a tire back here. So 
Make sure and remember where all these forces are. So these two forces represent the, the load that's actually supporting the entire weight of the vehicle. This force here is going to be the spare tire acting on the vehicle. This force here would be if the spare tire was mounted underneath the bed where I'm going to put it. So here this black line represents just a simplified frame of the truck so we can really understand what's going on here. This point here would represent the center of mass, so that's just the collective center of mass of the truck, excluding the spare tires. These two are going to be our variables. If we don't mount the spare tire under the bed and we mount it off of the back of the truck as most people do with traditional spare tire carries, you'll notice the distance from this point here to this point here is about twice as much is if you mount it underneath the bed. So what that ends up doing is it actually acts as a fulcrum. So the force of the tire pushing down here fulcrums the entire chassis on the rear axle and ends up reducing the amount of traction you actually get on your front axle. It's pretty nuts. Um, I do want to note too, some people are going to note vehicles have suspension. This diagram here doesn't uh, account for suspension. The effects of suspension compressing and decompressing on the front end in this case um, are minute. But really what I want to get at is the distance from this force to the rear axle because that is what is essentially a lever arm and is going to lift up on your front axle in that it leads to a lot of adverse performance effects. It also ends up affecting you on hill climbs because that spare tire is so high up it puts kind of a torque on the chassis which again reduces front axle grip on steep hill climbs. I don't know why I drew this so small. So essentially what this is showing here is the vehicle going up an incline and now this very changes a lot of things. So these forces always point straight down to the center of the earth. This would be the plane of whatever you're driving on and this would be the incline that we're going up. So the tire being placed here actually exaggerates the, uh, the loss of traction on the front wheels on hill climbs. And that's just due to this distance from the rear axle versus this distance from the rear axle. It's a big change. Yeah, that's why I'm locating this spare tire here. And uh, I don't know, stay tuned to make sure this thing works. Um, as soon as I'm done with this, I have actually two weeks and the maiden voyage for this brand new build with a cross member cut out of the frame is going to Colorado and Utah for a two week trip. So hope this works. Pretty sure I uh, designed it right. Also, there's some uh, um, bracing underneath this thing. that's gonna be really cool that I really wanna show you guys. Um, it's not on the flatbed now. Um, pretty, pretty crazy uh, things that are going to need to occur to distribute um, that load through this aluminum bed. It's very light, by the way. But anyways, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Big pile of dead zip ties there. There's another pile over there. And all the wiring looms are removed from the X there. So mark some lines on this guy and then get that thing out of there. Well, it's moving.